Hey guys, Technocration here. Today we're building my new £1,000 PC. This PC is designed for gaming, schoolwork, 3D modelling, software development, and to edit my videos. With a £1,000 budget, I wanted my PC to look nice with a red and black colour theme, and also to last a long time, as well as having a good price to performance ratio. Without further ado, let's get straight into this. For the CPU I chose the Intel i7-4790K, with a clock speed of 4GHz, 4 cores with hyperthreading, a large cache and great overclocking abilities, the CPU is a great fit for the build, for only £250. In terms of cooling, I stuck with the Intel stock cooler and I don't plan to overclock immediately, and it will cool my CPU adequately until I save up some money to get an aftermarket cooler. For the motherboard I went with the MSI Z97 Gaming 5 with high quality capacitors and VRMs along with great onboard audio, dual channel memory architecture, M.2 support and lots of fan headers. It was perfect for just short of £100, not to mention the great looks. The RAM was a no-brainer. For £50 I got a single 8GB stick of 2400MHz DDR3 memory with XMP profiling. I bought a single stick with a view to upgrade to 16GB later. For the GPU I chose AMD's new R9390 GPU to power my system. Its huge 8GB of VRAM was perfect for video editing and modelling and using high quality textures and games. It was originally going to use a 290, but with a small performance gain for no extra price, I went with the 390. I chose MSI's variant as it suited my build. Its cooler is almost silent and provides low temperatures. Its redesigned PCB, metal backplate and reinforcing plates means that the motherboard's PCI slot will rip off before the card starts to bend under its ridiculous weight. Overall the card is a steal for £260 and will provide great 1080p and 1440p gaming performance. If you want to see full benchmarks of this PC, look out for that in a future video. There's not much to say about the hard drive other than it's 1TB, 7200 RPM and it didn't cost much. At £35 a Seagate Barracuda is not much more than your average hard drive, which will do for mass storage and your OS until I upgrade to an SSD for a boot drive later on. For the PSU I selected the EVGA Supernova GS650 Watt Power Supply. It has all Japanese capacitors and an 80 plus gold efficiency rating. It's modular and its cables are of nice black colour with an individually sleeved without being sleeved at all effect. The reliability, aesthetically pleasing cables and its relatively low price coming in at £60 made it the perfect power supply for the build. For the case I went with the Corsair 750D. It's minimal and simplistic look, front IO, multiple dust filters and brilliant amount of fan and radiator space along with the side panel window makes this case a great case. Its great cable management options and spacious design make it a great for building in, especially for first time builders like me. It and its three included fans make it well worth its £100 price tag. Overall, all the parts of the system come together to create a great performing gaming and video editing PC, which is reliable and looks great. In the future, I would look to upgrade by adding another 8GB stick of RAM in, adding an SSD and changing the CPU look to something more like an all-in-one liquid cooler. For now though, we have all the parts, so the only thing left to do is build it. For this build, we will only need one tool, a screwdriver. Also, if you feel like it, an anti-static wristband is a great just-in-case measure. So to start off, we're going to need to take the side panels off the case. There should be a few small thumb screws on the rear side. Undo these and put them in a safe place as they are easy to lose. Then remove the side panels and put them away too. In most cases, there will be a small box stashed in one of the hard drive trays. Inside it is usually some cable ties and some screws along with the instruction manual. Take this out and put it to the side. You may need it for cable management later. Next we'll install the I.O. shield. This is found in your motherboard box and will just pop into its place at the rear of the case. Sometimes with these, sometimes not. You will know it's in when you hear a loud click. Now we're ready to prep the motherboard and install it. Take your motherboard out of its protective anti-static sleeve and put it on an anti-static surface. Your motherboard box will work just fine. Don't put it on your anti-static bag as the outside of it is not static protective because it's lined in metal. Now we need to install the CPU. To do this simply lift the latch on the side of the socket by pushing it down and pulling it away from the socket and then let it spring up. Now get your CPU and handling it by the edges lower it into the socket with the gold arrow on your CPU facing the same direction as the one on your motherboard. 
Now close the retainer by pushing the latch down and placing it under its holding notch. When you do this, the black cover should just pop out. Keep this, as if you need to RMA your motherboard, you will need this to protect the pins on the CPU. Now we need to install the motherboard in our case. Some cases will have the motherboard standoffs pre-installed. If not, find your case standoffs and screw them into the holes which match your motherboard size. Then lower your motherboard into the case, align the I.O. with the I.O. shield. Then screw in the standoff screws into the screw holes on your motherboard. There should be 9 screws in total for an ATX motherboard or less for a smaller size. The RAM is next to be installed onto our motherboard. To do this, open the clips on your DIMM slot you're installing your stick of RAM into. Next, align the notch on your stick of RAM with the notch on your DIMM slot. Push the RAM into the slot until both the retention clips snap up into their places holding the DIMM in. It may require a fair amount of pressure. Repeat the process until all your DIMMs are installed. Your CPU cooler is next to install. All CPU coolers have different ways of being installed, so be sure to refer to the manual when you install it because the last thing you want is to break your CPU or crack your motherboard. In my case, the Intel stock cooler is installed by pushing in four clips and twisting them to lock them in place. Then plug your CPU fan into the fan header called CPU1. If you have multiple plans, plug them into CPU1 and 2, etc. Now we need to install the GPU. Remove all the packaging and labeling and lure it into the case. Find the PCI brackets that align with your card. These need to be removed. Now you can lower your GPU into its PCIe 16x slot and push it in until the retention clip holds it in. Then screw the screws that held the brackets in back into their places, holding the GPU in nice and tight. The hard drives are next to install. Pull out the hard drive cages and place the HDD in. Mounting methods differ from case to case, but in my case you stretch the cage out around the hard drive until the anti-vibration mounts slip into the screw holes in the drive. Then just slide the cage back in and repeat this step for each hard drive you are installing. To install the power supply, slide it into its area and push it up into the mounting plate. Next, screw the hard drive screws into the holes which align with the holes in the hard drives. Now for the fun plot, plugging in the cables and managing them. We'll start off with the case fans. Plug these into the nearest fan header called SysFan. Next, the front I.O. connections. With most motherboards nowadays, they ship with an easy plug managers. If yours does not have one, refer to the manual. Plug in the corresponding cable into the header and then install the plug manager into the corresponding header on your motherboard. If you're unsure what the sizzle where this is, refer to the manual in your motherboard box. Now plug the rest of your front I.O. into the motherboard. This includes HD audio, USB 2.0 and 3.0. Now for the power plugs. If you have a modular power supply, I suggest starting by plugging the cable in at the power supply first before plugging it into the corresponding header. We'll start with the 22 pin cable. This is usually located on the right side of the motherboard next to the DIMM slots. Next plug in the 8 pin CPU power. Then plug in the GPU 8 pin and 6 pin connector. This will vary depending on the TDP of your GPU. Next we'll plug in the SATA power. This is the long bar on the left side of your hard drive. Now we're finished with the power connectors. Plug in the SATA data cable next to your SATA power on your hard drive. These flat cables are shipped with your motherboard usually. Then plug in the SATA data cables into your motherboard SATA ports. You're done, that's all there is to it. Put the side panels back on, plug in the power connector, monitor keyboard, mouse and install your OS and you should have got yourself a hopefully functioning computer. After nearly 4 months with this PC I'm still very happy with it. I've been able to run every game at max at 1080p which is a great step up from my previous computer, a 13 inch Retina MacBook Pro. It's been relatively quiet and the only noticeable loud component is the Intel CPU stock cooler. 
It looks great on my desk and I'm very happy with the speed I am now able to edit with. Overall, it was worth every penny I spent on it, but in the future I'd definitely be upgrading the CPU cooler to an AIO, getting another 8GB stick of RAM and maybe adding an SSD or two.